guys, it's Sam and this is my spoiler free review of Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rosh. Snow Like Ashes exists in a world where there are eight different main kingdoms. Four of them are season kingdoms, so each of the seasons exists all the time in the one kingdom. There's autumn, winter, spring, summer, obviously. And then there are the rhythm kingdoms, and those ones I don't really have quite as figured out, but there are four of those as well. And each kingdom has a conduit that their royal leader, whether it's a king or queen, controls and kind of has the magic for that kingdom and kind of makes sure that the kingdom runs appropriately. Our main character, Mira, is from Winter, and years ago, about 16 years I think is how long it's been, her nation's conduit was broken, her royals were killed, and all of her people were enslaved by the Spring Nation. And she has been a refugee along with I think about 12 other people for her entire life. She was saved as an infant along with one of her other friends, and everybody else is pretty much adults in the whole area, and they've been on the run trying to get back their conduit as well as trying to rebuild their kingdom somehow and they're kind of always on the run from the very evil nation that is Spring. All that sounds a little complicated. The first part of this book is kind of a little info dumpy only slightly. So at the beginning it kind of feels a little bit like that where it just sounds like it's not a good premise but I promise you that it is. It sounds like it's going to be just a very basic oh all the kingdoms are seasons done. It's more than that, and it is a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. Sarah Rosh actually wrote this originally when she was a child. I think she was like in sixth grade or something is what I saw from the little synopsis in the front about her. So you can tell that it was based on childhood thoughts, but she's definitely developed it since then. She's probably, I think, in her mid to late 20s now when she released this book. So it's definitely well developed. It is based on very simple ideas almost, but it has evolved into something really awesome. And the world building in here is really, really interesting. And it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I really enjoyed the world building in here. The map that we get is great in the front as well as just all the little things that we have about all the different nations. And it's a lot more complex than I thought it was going to be. So next let me talk about the characters. I really enjoyed Mira as a main character. She is a badass without being overly badass. She's more human than a lot of our really badass lady heroines like Katniss or Selena from Throne of Glass. She has a little more humanity to her but she's also really really awesome. She uses a chakram as her main weapon. If you guys don't know what that is it basically looks like this. It's a blade in a circle which is the coolest thing to read about because I'm really used to hearing about you know swords or like bows and arrows and stuff. I have never read about a character using a chakram before. So that was really awesome that I really liked her fighting style in that way and she's just a very driven character. She's very kind of patriotic for being somebody who grew up without a nation and the things that she does actually make sense and her motivations make sense to me and that's really nice to read about although she's one of those very kind of stalwart characters at times where she really cares about her country and she cares about other people it's not in a martyr type way I feel like a lot of times books can kind of fall into that martyr syndrome where the main character is always sacrificing themselves for the greater good which I find very unbelievable especially when dealing with teenagers because I wasn't like that. I'm not even really like that now necessarily. Maybe under extreme circumstances like these people, but I don't know. So when I see a very martyr character, I find it very hard to believe. Mira is not at all selfish or anything, but she's also not completely selfless where she throws herself just to the wind and she does things that make sense. Next, let me talk about our male characters. There is a love triangle in this and before you shut it all down, I know that people hate love triangles, but it's not a very big love triangle. It's not even really the main focus. There's a lot going on in this book and this is a book where I don't feel like the love interests dominate everything. It makes sense why there's a love triangle in here actually, I feel, and it's not overly tropey. There is a pre-existing kind of pre-page one love interest, but it's not in the kind of Gale from Hunger Games or even like Mal from the Grisha trilogy where he never saw her before and he's just now seeing her now as, you know, having a crush on her or whatever. It's a pre-existing kind of mutual crush and then we have another person coming in later. But that I think added an element of being okay with this love triangle. It wasn't very typical. It was kind of different and it wasn't the main focus of the story at all. Mira has different things to worry about and she does and she doesn't focus on the love interest and love is never thrown out there as a thing. You know, people aren't proclaiming their love for each other constantly, da 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 da. Like there are different things to worry about and I kind of liked both of the main male leads, which typically doesn't happen for me. And it's a very kind of different dynamic there, which I'm interested to see how that works out in future books. 
As far as the plot, I found this very, very original. There is a slight twist that I did predict towards the end, but the way that the twist was gone about and the after effects of that twist being revealed were different than I thought they were going to be, and again, wasn't very typical, at least in my opinion. So. I didn't find this book predictable at all. I didn't see the things that were happening. I didn't know how characters were going to get out of situations they were in or anything like that. And even the villain I found very unpredictable in a very non tropey way. So I really enjoyed this book a lot. There were still things I had a slight problem with, but I just tend to have problems with first books in general as far as how things are kind of developed and such, but I'm really interested to see how the rest of the series goes. I already have the next book on my most anticipated list for this coming year. The next book is called Ice Like Fire, I believe. I will put a little picture of the cover here. Looks really amazing. I'm very excited. So I am very interested to see where the rest of this series goes. It's a very interesting story. It's very original. I really enjoy the characters and I am very excited to see where this whole series ends up. So that is it for my spoiler free review. Comment down below and let me know if you're the series and what you think of it. I really enjoy it and I'm very interested to see what happens in the rest of the series. So comment down below and let me know what you think. Well, thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!